everybody, welcome to another special test that we've got for you here at Cycle News. And now if there's one super bike that we've all kind of been waiting for, for seems like the last decade, it's been a brand new 5-blade, a uh, new brand new Honda CBR1000RR-RSP 5-blade. I think I've got all that in there. <laughs> there's probably someone I've missed. But yeah, this bike has been hugely anticipated now for quite some time because the previous generation 5-blade it was basically a, an updated version. I mean, you can basically trace its line back to 2008. Um, and it just, each, every couple of years, it got updated here and there. But this one, this one is all new. And it also coincides with Honda's kind of, I guess, reinvigoration of superbike racing, where HRC are now under net, the HRC banner is now under in full control of the World Superbike team with Leon Haslam and uh, Alvaro Bautista. So, that's really cool to see Honda get back out there and to really sort of put the might back into their production racing side that goes alongside the Repsol Honda guys in MotoGP. So yeah, all new bike this one. This is ground up job. There's a lot to talk about in the tech stuff. So let's get into it and we'll come back and go for a ride. So what's new? Well, pretty much everything. Honda's now the first inline four cylinder company to use the MotoGP standard 81 mil bore. The same as Ducati and Aprilia are doing with their oversized superbikes. The stroke is 48.5 mil, giving it the same internal dimensions as the famed RC213 VS. The new mode is all about reducing friction and weight. There's new forged pistons, titanium conrods, a new cylinder head, 4 mil bigger throttle bodies at 52 mil, finger followers for the valve actuation a la the BMW S1000RR, new cams, and a new intake and ram air system. One of the cool features is that Honda hasn't just removed the ignition barrel so they could use a perimeter key. It's gone so the engineers could make even more space for the new Ram Air system. Honda's also teamed with the Krapovich to make a gorgeous and very loud titanium muffler to match the stainless steel headers. Honda's quoting power at 186 horsepower at 12,000 RPM, with torque claimed at 83 pounds feet at 11,000 RPM, with the red line increased 1,000 RPM to 14,500. The chassis is lighter and stiffer than before, with a longer swing arm and wheelbase, but a smaller main frame. The center of gravity has been raised, while the rake has been slightly relaxed at 24 degrees with a bit more trail, in a package weighing a claimed 443 pounds wet. You get the Olin Smart EC243 mil MPX fork and TTX36 shock. You get new Brembo Stylema four piston calipers and a new Brembo master cylinder. And you get all new bodywork with winglets that produce the same downforce as Mark Marquez's 2018 MotoGP racer. The electronics have been completely revised with new algorithms for traction and wheelie control and you also get a new launch control feature. You get revised settings for the quick shifter and new ABS and you also get a 5 inch TFT dash with 5 different faces. This is Honda's biggest effort yet in the modern superbike class. So let's go for a spin around Thunder Hill in Northern California to see how all these new parts gel together. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Let's go. Yep. Man, just coming out of the pits, you can feel how light this thing is. Man, it's a noisy bike. That exhaust is loud. So is the inside. And already you can feel this thing's just got such better brakes. It's really short, the tank, like, I'm trying to lean on the tank. God. And that power rush comes in hard. From sort of from about 6,000, there's nothing there. And then you get past eight, and the thing just whooshes along. Through the roads quick. Gets on its side, it's so nice. It steers with a lot more precision than the old one. The 
old bike you sort of have to muscle it a little bit even though it's a bit more rangy and, and, and probably fits me a bit better than this you're very I suppose cramped from the waist down although the bars on this thing are nice and wide almost flat in the angle but the gap between the seat and the pegs is quite short so boy does this thing kick up speed when it goes Tips in the corner so much nicer. Yeah, we're on manual suspension settings. Jeez, that dead spot. Come on, let's go. Come on. Yeah, the manual suspension settings are really, really nice on this electronic oil on shop. Oh, the fork and shop, I should say. gear shift on this is lovely really really smooth super light a little touchy but it's a proper race system much more direct than the old bike and the big thing is just how much this thing spins up far out it tears through the rev range once it's above 8,000 and it makes so much top end. I can't get over the noise of this, it's so, it's so loud. Woo! Oh, going there a bit hot. <laughs> Mess that up. Electronics are great. This is on level one everything. It's got the most engine brake. Man, this is really, really sweet. The braking is next level in comparison to the old bike. Oh. Yeah, the braking is just completely different in comparison to the old bike. There's so much more feel from that Brembo master cylinder. But yeah, this is a this is a real race bike, no doubt. This is a race bike first and a road bike second. She's very compact. That tank, that low tank, not that easy for a big guy like me to like lean against it. I get lazy and I like to lean on the tank to kind of weight up the front, and it's not that easy. But it's a little bit lower. Just got to be. This is a physical thing to ride, shall we say? Man, cool bike, far out. Big difference over the old one. Well, that was a pretty cool day. Uh, Thunder Hill, Thunder Hill, Northern California in the afternoon. Beautiful. Shh. This thing's making all kinds of beeping and squizzy machine noises at me. <laughs> um, yeah, great day. Um, I was actually in Milan last year for, uh, for the ICMA show when they unveiled this. We went, to, we went to this big building in Milan and it was big pomp and ceremony and all that and everyone just, you know, this thing blew everyone's mind. So it's been a long time coming for us to be able to get on one of these things. Um, Europe and the rest of the world have basically already had a crack at this. Finally, we get to have a go at hip of it here in America. And yeah, it's a really, really good bike. Um, if I'm honest, it feels like the bike that Honda probably should have built maybe five years ago. Um, you know, that last CBL that they had was definitely a little long in the tooth, even though I had, you know, change of dress every couple of years. Uh, it was still effectively very similar bike to what came out in 2008. Um, but this one, yeah, ground up redesign, all new. Um, and there's a bunch of things that stand out about this. First thing is the biggest difference is the engine. The, the fact that this thing picks up revs at the speed that it does is pretty remarkable when you consider how CBRs of the past used to be. They weren't the, always the, they weren't the quickest of revving engines, shall we say, even though they had plenty of torque, but they didn't rip through rev ranges like Kawasaki's and things like that. That's what this thing does now. Like it gets, once you labor past that blasted emission stuff which really does hurt the bottom end on that thing and really masks what kind of bottom end it's got because you end up having to 
chug your way through six, 7,000 RPM in second gear, low speed corners. And then once you're past eight and a half, whew, off she goes. Very much like the BMW. Um, you know, the S1000RR has had a lot of, uh, you know, stuff thrown at it in America uh, because of the emissions. Not BMW's fault, it's just the way it is. And it's similar to this, although the Honda's not as bad. So uh, once you get through those, that emissions block, um, she's, she goes, man, it's good fun. It's real good fun. It makes amazing top end horsepower, it's great. Um, and I'd love to try one of these things when it's in race mode. Once they get rid of all that stuff and you can really let the engine do its thing, it's gonna be really, really cool. The second thing is the chassis. Now, the old CBR, I really like the old CBR, especially like the ergonomics of the old CBR. It's a, it fit, you know, lanky guys like me pretty well. Um, this gap from here to here for me is just too short. Um, I didn't really feel comfortable on it. I would like, I mean, a set of, nothing that a set of rear sets won't fix um, and a few other bits and pieces, but the bars here, like big wide bars, you know, that's supermoto style almost bars. Plenty of leverage, plenty of feel. And the way this thing gets from upright to in the corner is reminiscent of beautiful 600s. Uh, I mean, it's a fairly overused analogy and me talking about big bikes, but it really does feel like a, a bike that's not a super bike. It feels like a smaller bike. Um, you know, it's quite fat, I guess, at the tank here. And that was actually another thing which I struggled with. The tank's 45 mil lower than the old bike. And I get my riding styles, I like to lean on the tank and sort of use it as a bit of a buffer. Whereas this is really low and you try doing this and you end up a lot lower overall. Like you sit more on top of this bike, whereas the old one, you kind of sat in it a little bit more, if that makes sense. So that was a, that was a bit of a thing and shorter riders, you'll be fine. Um, I'm sure I would get used to it if I had one in my garage, but that's probably not gonna happen. Um, the electronic Olons are really, really good. Uh, I spent most of my time in manual. I did two sessions with the auto settings and look, they feel, they feel great. I would like to take it on the road. I think that's where the electronic suspension stuff really starts to show its worth. But on the track, you know, good Olon suspension on the track, it's pretty hard to fault really. Um, you know, probably might need a, shot, a stiffer spring or a bit more preload in the back for my fat ass, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, Electronics, speaking of electronics, are much better than the old ones. The cut-in of the traction control isn't, isn't as abrupt as, a, as what it was. Uh, we dialed everything right back, so level one full power, level one traction, level one wheelie, the most engine brake you can get. And yeah, it made it feel like Great. a bit more of a real motorcycle. Um, once you, and it's the same with a lot of the superbikes. Once you start dialing those electronics back and it becomes more of a mechanical thing rather than a computer, that's when these things really start to show their worth. But uh, one thing, actually, before I, before I forget, one thing that is big difference, the brakes. Brakes are way better on this. Now that's got a uh, Brembo Master Cylinder and it's got the Stylema calipers. Comes with rubber brake lines though. That's a, that's a bit of a bummer. Um, but the brakes overall are much better. They're they are really good. And they did take a fairly decent hammering and I don't think I really got many much brake fade over sort of, I think I did a 14 lap stint at one point. So, they were pretty good, although for $28,500 US, I would like to see a bike with steel brake lines. Uh, I can think of one manufacturer that, co that costs substantially less that has steel brake lines. So anyway, uh, but yeah, look, it's a, it's a very nice thing. Um, it's gonna make a really good racing bike. This as a base model is gonna be a better bike than what the previous generation was as a race bike. This is a race bike first and a road bike second. And that's what current generation super bikes are. Um, there's, no, there, there's plenty of bikes in Honda's range that make better road bikes than what this thing's gonna do. But this thing is designed to go and win races. And I really hope to see that, uh, see that come to fruition. You can see the effort that Honda's making in World Superbike now with the factory running their own World Superbike team. Good riders on board, you know, good team. So look, they're gonna get there. They always do, they're Honda. <laughs> they, they always succeed in the end. Um, but yeah, good to see this thing out now. Uh, been a long time coming and they've done a good job with this. So it's gonna please a lot of guys when they get one of these things, that's for sure. Anyway guys, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, do all that stuff for us. And uh, please leave your comments in the uh, comment section below. I will do my very best to get back to you guys as soon as possible. But until next time guys, keep it rubber side down and I'll see you next time. Cheers.